The next step in this process is to open up our image file in Photoshop and that's where we're going to slice it up uh, and get it in different pieces ready for the web. So I'm going to, we do have our document here and I'm going to pick the first page which remember we converted into a JPEG. Now in an ideal world we would actually create this document for HTML marketing but in the real world a lot of times you're having to work with a document that's already created but that you want to convert into HTML so that's what we're going to do and uh, we're going to use this slice tool over here on your on your toolbar and uh, there's a couple of different things to use here you're probably already familiar with the crop tool but this slice tool is what actually will segment out the document into various slices and then we can use this slice select tool to choose those documents and make changes so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start slicing the document up. And the way that this works is you slice the document up and then export it for web. In the export function, you actually save HTML code and a series of image files that will then be uploaded to the web. And when you send out an HTML-based email, you're not attaching any documents. You're simply sending out HTML code that when the recipient gets it in their email all the graphics are pulled from the web and it appears as though you have a marketing flyer in your email now I've made my uh, canvas big so I can see what I've got going on and and uh, when I look at this flyer it naturally seems to be in several sections we've got this top part right here that uh, has a title on it and then we have these graphics here that are really kind of in two sections We've got this section of pictures and then this little bottom graphic and then a uh, large section of text which is now an image on the right hand side and then we got a little bit of white space going all the way around because this was on a document so I'm gonna take my slice tool and I'm gonna first go ahead and try to get to the left of this shadow and create a slice of the title. Just pull that and get right to the right of any additional text. And now I've created uh, my first slice and you'll see that Photoshop has automatically created some other slices around the one that I have so it's sectioned off the picture. Now this first slice right here is what's called a user slice and all these other ones are automatic slices. You got a lot more flexibility with a user slice to shape it and resize it and then set specific options for the slice. So ultimately I want all my slices to be user slices. So now I'm going to create some more slices that, uh, that section up the document the way that I want to. And uh, let's see, we'll start here and I'm going to come down and get to just about here. Okay, and then I am going to go ahead and get this bottom section that's great now I want to get this bottom section right here excellent and that looks pretty good I think I've gotten just about everything and um, now I want to make sure that I haven't overlapped any slices because if I overlapped one over the other it's gonna create these various little slices here and there so I'm gonna get real big on my document and just start uh, I see one right there and um, I've got a gap here so I'm gonna switch to my slice select tool and I can see that this top slice I have made it a little bit bigger so I'm gonna pull it back up to right there and take a look at each one of my sections here I can also look at the slice numbers to see um, but I can also look at it while I've got it blown up real big and um, that looks pretty good. The next step here is to take a look at the different slices. I've created a user slice here, a user slice here, a user slice here, and these two do from here look like they overlap. So we're going to come back down here and have a good look at these. And I think that they do. So there we go. But if you recall, I never drew a slice over this section. Now this is a automatic slice, and I'd actually like to change that to a user slice as well. Again, you can see I'm clicked, I've clicked on it, but I don't have any way of sizing or resizing this slice. So I'm going to promote that to a user slice, and now I can make some changes to it. There's no particular changes that I want to make, but um, I did want to show you how to promote to a user slice. 
Now the next thing that I want to do is this uh, has exported and I want to just take a look at the image size here and I'll see that it's uh, showing up the same as the piece of paper that I print on but it's a 200 pixel resolution and that will make my graphics a little bit heavy for the web so I'm going to change that to 72 and when I do that you'll see it's 612 pixels wide which is a lot more digestible for email systems, um, particularly for people with smaller monitors that uh, may not be able to look at a email with quite as wide a resolution. So I'm going to click OK. That shrinks that down to 72, and I'm going to uh, view, uh, fit on screen view. Next step is going to be to use my export for web and devices function. So, uh, oh, before I do that, I do want to link this particular slice to the main website. And to do that, I'm going to go into the Edit Slice Options. And I'm going to, I can rename my slices. And I can also uh, put in a URL. So we're going to do a couple of things with these uh, slice options. First off, I'm going to put URL here. Okay, and I want it to open up in a new window. So I'm just going to use that blank right there and uh, I think I want to link that back to the resort so I'm gonna hit edit slice there and I need to go find the URL for the resort let's see here here we go go grab that and put that right here and then also I want that to open in a new window the other thing that I have are these white spaces around the sides, which I've tried to leave those off because they just create white space in the email and they're not really necessary. But when I do export it, um, there's going to be a, a white bar graphic that's created. And so what I want to do is I want to go into each one of these and I want to edit the slice options and choose no image. And so I'm going to do that for the top slice, the side slice. The right side slice and the bottom slice. Now that's not terribly necessary. I'm just trying to reduce the number of graphics that actually get exported when I go through the next step. And I could have just done my slices so that they cover up the entire flyer. So um, that's just personal preference. So now I'm going to hit File and Save for Web and Devices. And I'm going to come down here and uh, fit in view. So now I can see each of my documents, the beforehand and then the optimized version. And now I can go into each one of my slices and actually change my settings. And I could do that for, uh, for individual slices if I wanted to. You'll see the uh, image size has been resized to uh, 612 by 792. And down here I can see each of my slices will load um, based on a certain download time so I can go ahead and look and see how well my graphic is optimized there. I also have a number of output settings here so if I want to get in and tweak anything I can uh, I can do that. I can tweak how the HTML is exported and I can tweak how the uh, slices are generated but I'm going to leave all that in as default settings right now. And so what's going to happen when I go through this process is Photoshop is going to export all of the individual graphics as defined by the slices and then if I choose the option it's going to generate HTML code for me so I'll hit save and have a look at that so I want to put it right here where I've created and I want to format my uh, I want my format to be both HTML and images not images only or not HTML only I'm going to use the default settings and then I want to do all of my slices or I could just pick specific slices so I'll hit save and all of the graphics are going to be dumped into an images folder go back in here to my window here we go I've got my HTML and I've got my images and they're all right here I can just flip through and look at them and if I open up my HTML code and I can I can open that with just about anything I have this little uh, HTML text editor right here and uh, you can see this is the HTML code associated with that and you can see my two links that I created in the uh, slice options area 
And so the next step will be to open up our HTML code into Dreamweaver and clean it up and get it ready for export to the web server.